Hi, this is the third part of right liver attack in depth by Columbier. Let's go forward and see what we have today. We want to discuss bishop e7. Last time we dis discussed rook b8 at uh, move 8. This time we are going to talk about bishop e7 by black. So this is a right liver attack. And we have seen up to here. And here at move 8, black's response could be bishop e7. Last time we have seen what happens if they play rook b8. So bishop e7 is one of the most aggressive responses. And why it is aggressive? Uh, it doesn't attack anything. It uh, actually implicitly attacks. First of all, it goes to castle as quick as possible. Then our bishop is hanging there. This is hanging. Currently is uh, pinning that and that. But when they castle and develop the bishop out, the other bishop out, then our bishop is hanging. Second, the bishop itself uh, attacks our knight. The black's black scored bishop is attacking our knight whenever the knight of black moves. So this is an aggressive response. Here, We've mm, first saved the bishop. There are many ways that you can save. The, for example, you can keep pinning this pawn. You can go to d3. Uh, why I'm saying that we save the bishop? Mm, uh, okay, a bishop cannot be captured right now. I mean, if uh, let's say just uh, doing some stupid move, this bishop cannot be captured. Okay, it can be captured, but we will capture the uh, rook. But the point is that uh, there are uh, several reasons to retreat this bishop. First of all, black is quite ready to launch a devastating attack, so we should pre be prepared for that. And one reason that we play bishop d3 is uh, to stop, uh, slow down the pawn push. Also, uh, bishop d3 creates counter plays. And for example, after black says this bishop eyes on h7 spot. So, uh, so it's not just uh, a retreating move, but also it's a bit aggressive. Here, it doesn't have any target. We know that black is going to castle, then we are pinning what? Uh, also, there is an uh, option to take. This is an option, but... It's very complicated and I don't want to go there. So simply retreat the bishop and then they castle, we castle. They may play, no, I just uh, want to show you some candidate moves. Uh, here, uh, if they play, for example, something like bishop g4, it's just uh, making their own pieces vulnerable. For example, we just slide away with the queen to g3 and if they try to continue the idea we had that we showed at the rook b8. This time it fails because simply we want to remove the defender of bishop. And what can black do? If they take the knight, then we can take the bishop. We can also take uh, the knight first. This is more accurate. And then take the bishop. Yep. Um, because uh, removing two pieces is better, right? So... And uh, this move is out of question. They cannot play it. Also, they cannot move the knight to continue their uh, usual plan. Uh, remember that black's plan is to play f5 and uh, e4 and so on. For that, they should move the knight somewhere and then play. But if uh, here, if they move the knight, it's end of the day. I mean, you can win with tons of ways. For example, you can take this pawn and open the h file for your queen. Your queen is there to deliver mate. So they cannot move. And see, this bishop d3 in this regard is very strong. It slows down black a lot. And black just needs uh, to attack. Otherwise, black is down a pawn and is down a structure. As much as you can, you should slow it down. So, best move for black here is neither of these moves oh sorry also something like rook b8 is possible move but mm, it doesn't bring too much it's going to be similar to the line that we discussed last time i don't go into it 
The best move for black is to play g6, why? Because they want to push f5, they play g6 and later they want to push f5 and attack the and then push e4. So this is, the, uh, sorry, g6 is the preparation of that move. And here I just, I don't want to continue too much, but I just want to say one word. Here you should be alert. You know the plan from again from the previous um, video. You know the plan of the black. They want to uh, expand the pawns, so you should be careful and vacate uh, a space for your uh, knight. The vulnerable piece over there. Now your knight doesn't have any target, right? H seven is not the target anymore. So you should make a, a space for knight. For example, if you play something nonsense, then we arise to this position that, okay, knight is under attack. What do you want to do? You want to retreat the knight, then have a good day. All right? I mean, this is at least a piece, if not more. So don't play uh, unconscious. Uh, you can also retreat the knight here. If uh, they take the knight, then... That's good. That's awesome for white. Even though engine maybe likes uh, black position, but it's very good for white because, yeah, uh, engine may uh, suggest, for example, they can push the pawn. If you uh, take it, then they may push the pawn further, you know, something like that, but it doesn't bring too much for black. I mean, this uh, can be defended like that. The bishop can be defended with queen. So it doesn't bring too much to black. Black will be down two pawns. And usually in under engine level, two pawns without a strong attack running is the end of a day. But if you give it to engine, engine can defend and end it in the row. Okay. So uh, one move is uh, just to retreat the knight. If they exchange, we are happy. But they usually don't exchange. Uh, they want to um, continue their plans uh, because if they exchange uh, here with just a uh, similar rule right as before we had at the rook b8 if they exchange then uh, our advantage is bigger and bigger so here um, there are several moves i think the best move could be retreating the queen why because then after they push the pawn you can uh, simply retreat the knight uh, or uh, the, the maybe better is to go to the c3 uh, to not uh, overcrowd the king side. And then if they push um, again, it's not a problem. You just uh, retreat the bishop. The point is that if you don't retreat the queen at on time, okay, let's say what, what you have actually. Let's say you play it. Uh, Peter, there is no good move actually. It's very clear that you should retreat the queen. Then this is a simple, this is a simple piece, right? So uh, you can see this, of course. But uh, and why d one? Um, because uh, there are not many options. So it's uh, in a sense it's easy, right? Where, where the queen go? Nowhere, <laughs> right? Uh, why not? The e2 because it doesn't want to block the bishop. So it's easy to understand d1 is the only place that queen can go. And you can easily see that f5 is coming. So you should vacate the space for your pieces. So that's it basically. And okay, what else they can do? Uh, uh, here we can actually retreat and they can do nothing in return. No, they can. No, they can just uh, try, for example, move the other pieces. But then, that's just good for you because you have time to develop and uh, also even exchanging pieces. That's uh, that's awesome. As long, okay, uh, the move I showed you is very stupid because it loses another pawn. But just to say one thing, if they do anything else except moving the knight, then you can just exchange the knights and enjoy the game. Okay. That's it with bishop e7. You see there is no strong attack running. Uh -huh. I wanted to say one more thing. 
here if they attack with the bishop initially again it doesn't matter you oh sorry you just slide away with the queen and that's it uh, and, uh, remember bishop g4 g4 the answer is queen g3 that's it so that's wrap up wraps up today's discussion see you next time uh, next time i just go to draxler attack the counter gambit a little bit various uh, kind of uh, for example what happens if they play queen c7 uh, it's not important the ideas is very, are very similar you know the plan of black and you know how to defend okay see you next time bye